Hello, what's up everybody out there? This is Tim again, and I'm here to do my second review. It's been a while since my first one. If it's about time I can get the get back into gear with my reviews here. Uh, this is my Chucky the Killer DVD collection. I figured I'd show this fucker this time since we got the second, third, and fourth, and fifth one on here. And I figured it's about time to do my second review for these films because it's been well a long ass time. <laughs> so let's get this motherfucker underway. As far as it goes for the second film, it's a it's a good film. Uh, it's a I like the film. I'll be honest, but it's just like a basic sequel. I mean, it hits all the same sequel notes that you would expect. Uh, Chucky's much more in the limelight in this film. He's not hidden in the shadows, and the suspense is pretty much all gone because Chucky's just so in the limelight. I mean, it's like the later Freddy films. Once again, though, Brad Dourif does a great job voice acting Chucky. He's just not as scary this time, but he has a lot of great one-liners. Chucky's always had that morbid sense of humor. Uh, he, like I said, he's, he's got a lot of great one-liners. Uh, but he has a lot of stupid-ass one-liners, too. Like when he gives the character Kyle in the film the finger. That's not a one-liner, but I still thought it was cheesy as fuck and stupid. And when he says women drivers, some shit about women drivers, I thought that was a little bit too silly. Uh, but uh, he has a lot of funny shit in here, too. Uh, a lot of funny-ass lines in here as well. This film is still decently written. It has a much more toyetic feel to it, though. I mean, vibe to it because of all the like the bright colors and the the score of the film gives me much more of like in the mind of like a like a toyetic type vibe. Um, and as for Chucky himself, like I said, he has great one-liners. The the uh, special effects for him looks much better in this film than it did in the first one. There's no spot the midget in the costume in this one. Um, yeah, uh, he looks much better special effects wise as Kevin Yeager once again. Alex Vincent is back as Andy. Uh, he's a little older in this one. He's not as cute, so you don't mind. You don't like him as much. He's lost a little bit of a step, but he's still good. Uh, new characters. You got the foster mom and the foster dad. The foster dad played by Garrett Graham, I believe. He plays a dick. I believed he was a dick. He does a good job playing a dick. <laughs> he's maybe a little bit over dick, overly dickish, but he does good enough to the point. Well, he's dick enough to the point where when he dies, you don't give a shit. <laughs> the foster mom is played by Genia Gutter. Uh, from uh, American Wildlife in London, and she's just fine here. I love her in American Wildlife in London, and she's fine here as well. Uh, in American Wildlife in London, yeah, that's, that's a great film. It's one of my favorite Marvel films. But anyway, uh, uh, this film right here, I think it's a good sequel, but it hits a, it's, feels like a sequel. It hits a lot of the same notes as the first one up until the final in the doll factory, the toy factory, which brings it up to uh, being uh, all, almost me almost liking me as good as the first one. Uh, but other than the final, it hits a lot of the same notes over again and definitely feels like a sequel. But anyway, let's just jump into the story of this fucker. Um, basically, Chucky's being rebuilt by the Play Pals company who owns the rights to this doll and wants to rebuild him so they can check and uh, see if he's like wired right so they can dispel any negative publicity around the doll. I don't really see why they need to do that. This seems like a forced resurrection. Uh, but wouldn't you think, I mean, Chucky getting rebuilt, would his soul already be gone out of his body? Wouldn't he be brought back some kind of magical way? But whatever. Um, you get some kind of death scene that kind of seems out of place when the workers putting it back together gets electrocuted and like flies backwards to the window. I thought it was okay, but I don't know. I just, it seemed kind of out of place and a little silly just the way it was filmed. But anyway, along with, uh, along with uh, the characters here, we get the character of Kyle, another orphan living in the same... Uh, House is Andy. She's fine. She's no Catherine Hicks. Sorry, but <laughs> she does all right. And as for Catherine Hicks and Chris Sarandon, they're greatly missed from this film. They are written out of the story in a very rather stupid way. Catherine Hicks's character is uh, <coughs> sorry was under psychiatric observation, which I thought was retarded. And the stupidest thing of all is what they do with the Chris Sarandon's character. He, so they say that his character didn't want to testify in the favor of the mom and the and Andy. I'm in favor of Catherine and Andy, and I just thought that was just fucking stupid in a dumbass way writing him out. So he just basically said, what, fuck you guys, I'm out. I just, bullshit way of writing him out. Uh, <laughs> but jumping right into the movie here, uh, Chucky gets brought back to life by Play Pals. Uh, his resurrection scene is okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, Andy gets put in foster care with the dick foster dad and the okay foster mom who seems to like him. Uh, Chucky, uh, you get some decent death scenes in this one, though. The death scenes are pretty good. Chucky hitches a ride with one of the Play Pals employees to, uh, Andy's, uh, uh, house, where he, where he's staying. 
and he fucking ties the guy's uh, hands up with a jump rope and suffocates the dude with a plastic bag, which is pretty intense, and I wouldn't want to go out that way. It's pretty fucking morbid. It's it's good, though. It's a good scene. Uh, so Chucky makes his way inside the house. There's already a good guy doll there. Uh, he disposes of that doll, buries him underneath the swing set, and you get kind of a humorous scene where uh, Andy first sees him and tells him he hates him, and Chucky has to, and takes a second before he can remember the name of the other doll, which was called uh, Tommy. It's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> At least I thought it was humorous. Um, but as far as the movie goes, it's pretty much just like a redo over of the first one. The people uh, don't believe Chucky's alive. They're not going to believe the fucking doll's alive. Uh, Andy's running around, running away from Chucky. Chucky runs after Andy. It's pretty much the same shit until we get to the point where uh, Chucky goes, uh, follows, uh, hitches a ride on Andy's school bus to, to his school, and uh, his teacher's a dick. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people in this movie are dicks for some reason. I don't know why. His teacher's a dick, and Chucky, like, uh, Andy escapes because Chucky's after him. Chucky's locked in the closet at the school. Uh, teacher lets him out. He fucking hits the teacher in the chest with some big pump, knocks her back like fucking look like ten foot, and um, she falls into a bunch of desks. He walks out there and like whacks the fucking shit out of her with a roller and beats her like multiple times. And the camera has a really cool thing where it like pans away from the violence. And I thought it was really good film and pretty art, really good uh, filmed and pretty artistic, you know, flavored for a chunky film. I didn't really expect that, but it played it played good. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, other than that, um. So Andy goes back home, tells Grouchy ass this the foster dad, he doesn't give a fuck, doesn't believe anything he says. Uh, and then later that night, Andy says, I've had enough of this shit, I'm tired of fucking around, I'm going to take this little son of a bitch one on one, because he ain't going to quit coming after me. So he basically goes down to the basement, trying to take this little fucker on one on one with one of those machines that you use to cut meat in the kitchen, I'm not sure what you call it. But uh, he wants to kill him with that, they have a scuffle down there, the foster dad wakes up, walks down the steps. And you have a kind of a neat scene, like I was talking about Chucky's good lines. This is one of them. I like this one. Chucky has like a hook. I'm not sure what you call it. And he puts it under there and grabs his uh, foot and pulls him backwards, and he like falls down upside down on the fucking uh, stairs. And he he says, "How's it hanging, Phil?" And I thought that was pretty funny. And the way Brad Dourif delivered, it, I thought it was pretty funny. And he lets go of it, uh, lets go of his foot, and he fucking falls down. And uh, I thought, at first, I thought he broke his neck on the concrete, but I think he just knocks his fucking brains out. But uh, anyway, so he's dead. The, Foster mom uh, blames herself for for his uh, blames Andy for it basically and herself for fuckface's death, thinking it was her fault because he wanted to get rid of Andy and she didn't do it when he wanted to, didn't get rid of him when he when he wanted to basically. So they send Andy back to the orphanage. Andy's at the orphanage. Uh, then the the foster mom gets killed off screen and rather gruesome looking death in the aftermath. I didn't expect that for her character, because <laughs> she's a little likable, not too much. Uh, so then he kidnaps Kyle and forces her to drive him to the orphanage where Andy is. Uh, it's pretty funny because he says, shut up and drive, I'm going to kick your fucking teeth in, which I thought was pretty funny, and Ray Brad delivers it again, it's great. So, uh, he got to go to the orphanage, and then you get up another pretty good death scene, I like this one too a lot. He stabs the fuck out of the woman in charge of the orphanage, and she flies backwards and lands on the copier, and it makes multiple copies of her dead corpse. I thought that was just pretty neat and well put together, that was pretty good thought out. And then, uh, so Chucky takes Andy hostage and takes him to the toy factory, the good guy doll factory. Kyle follows him there. And Kyle, I believe, is played by Christina Ellis, I think is how you say her name. She does fine. She's just okay. None of the characters in this one are really memorable or as likable as the mom and the cop from the first one. Uh, it's Catherine Hicks and Chris Sarandon. Like I said, the foster mom and foster dad are just there. And Kyle, she's just okay. Uh, and Andy, he's, he's fine. Uh, so Kyle makes it into the, the good guy factory and you get another humorous scene that's pretty funny with uh, fucking uh, Chucky getting ready to try to transfer his soul into Andy's body. And uh, he's like, you little shit, <laughs> it's too late. He, he's obviously spent too much time in the doll body so now he can't transfer his soul into Andy's body. And uh, he looks up and he hears some uh, knocking around or noises and he looks up and sees the good guy boxes and he goes what the hell and he fucking all fall down on him it's pretty funny the way Brad Dourif does it so Andy and Kyle take off running uh, there's a scene where Chucky gets his arm caught in his gate and fucking just like rips it off and you get to see like the doll hand coming off and everything it's pretty intense and the way Brad Dourif screams and stuff on the film it almost makes you feel sorry for the doll in a way because he does such a good job and after that he uh, takes the knife he's got and pulls the handle of it off and replaces his stump with the blade which we've seen in other films other characters do but it's pretty cool here I always enjoy it when a character does that in the film having a blade for a hand is always awesome I don't give a fuck what movie it is but anyway 
So he chases after him. Then you get another neat death scene. I really like this one too. When uh, the one of the workers at the uh, doll factory is the, when the assembly line is backed up and he's uh, straightening it out, Chucky comes up behind him, and fucking slashes him in the face, and he flies backwards. And the machine that puts the eyeballs in the dolls comes out and jams two toy eyes in his fucking eyes. And I thought that's pretty damn cool. And uh, after that, basically, um, uh, uh, Chucky uh, tries to attack him again, and he gets uh, stuck, uh, like stapled to this little. Uh, uh, Know what the fuck you call it? Little he gets stapled to the assembly line basically, and uh, they put it in reverse, and it's like the uh, machine in the assembly line that puts the doll parts in the dolls. Except it's in reverse now, so it puts him up there and shoves all the parts of the dolls into him, like the hands and stuff. And it fucking just sounds like it hurts like a son bitch because the way Brad Dourif uh, plays it. <laughs> and uh, so basically, you're probably thinking after that Chucky's dead, I guess. You know, fuck. Uh, but uh. Kyle gets knocked out, and you see Chuck again. He ain't got no legs, which is pretty cool, but I don't, this is a little silly to me. I don't know where the fuck he got this little fucking, like, scooter thing. He's, like, pushing himself along on it, dragging himself. I don't know where he got it, but it's still cool to see him around. It's like that Terminator thing from the first one, which I like, where he still gets cut all the shit, and it's still coming. I still love that. And he's coming after Andy still, and Kyle's knocked out, and Andy tur turns his valve that's full of, uh, shoots this big uh, thing of melted plastic out and covers him with it, like, fucking vaporizes him. And you'd think a little some bitch dead after that, just like a little corpse laying there. And, uh, Kyle wakes up, and she goes over there to check on him, but no, he's still coming, that little motherfucker just won't quit. <laughs> and he tries to attack Kyle and take her down. And, um, I thought this was a little silly. She takes, um... Like this fucking hose that's shooting that air and puts it in his mouth and it, blo it blows his head up like a big balloon and just gets it so big and it explodes. I'm just thinking, what the fuck? It kind of just reminded me too much of Looney Tunes or something. I just thought that was a little silly. And basically after that, they walk out of the factory and Kyle and Andy do. Boom, movie's over. And that's pretty much it. He's a little fucker dead. Uh, little fucker's dead in the end. <laughs> like I said, this feels like a sequel. Uh, it plays out like a sequel. Except for the ending final in the Doll Factory, which really brings it up to snuff, which almost makes me like it as much as the first movie, but not entirely. I would give this film about, well, I'd give this film three stars out of four. It's a, it's a good movie. It is. It's a good movie, and I do enjoy it. But it does pale in comparison to the first one. It loses the horror and the suspense because Chucky's like just so much in the limelight. Like the later Freddy movies, too much. It's like they made him the hero of this film. And it's only the second film in the franchise. He's... He's still intense and got that uh, anger to him and that rage and shit. And Brad Dorf, well, Brad Dorf, once again, acting wise, is great. He delivers the lines fantastic. And um, he plays it very well, screams and all. He's great. Uh, fucking the girl that plays Kyle, uh, Christine Elsa, I think say her name. She does fine. She's okay. She's no Catherine Hicks replacement, like I said again. Uh, Jenny Gutter, who plays the foster mom, she's fine. She's just there. Uh, Garrett Graham, who plays the foster dad, he plays a dick. He's just a, basically a dick. He plays a dick well. <laughs> uh, and uh, Alex Vincent, who plays Andy, he does fine. Once again, he's not as cute, so he's a little bit older, so he's not as likable. But he's still likable enough to where you root for him. And plus, you have the attachment to him from the first movie, so you still really care about the character and all he's going through. And he plays it fine. He's, he's fine. Um, and so I... The movie pretty much just ends quick on a fast note, and I guess I just have to wait to see part three until I find out. Until I get to, I mean, so I get to see what the fuck happens to these characters. So, I see you guys again with Child's Play 3. Once again, I think this is a good movie, and I would give it three stars out of four. It's a very entertaining sequel. Uh, and what it doesn't have in horror, it makes up for mostly in fun. It's just really fun, especially the final in the factory. Um, but yeah, it loses most of the horror and the suspense and goes from more like a fun Chucky's the Hero vibe, which is okay. I mean, it plays it out nicely. But yeah, I'll see you guys again with Child's Play 3. And like I said, this is a good movie, but it definitely feels like a sequel. So I'll see you guys again with Child's Play 3 and peace out and I hope you enjoyed the movie.